Is there a conflict between science and the Christian faith? Many people in our culture think that the answer to that question is yes. Many people think that the latest advances in science make belief in God unreasonable, uh, render the creation accounts found in scripture mm -hmm. unreliable. Mm -hmm. Is that really the case? Uh, Bijan Namadi, you're a, a physicist and a Christian and I very much appreciate you being here with us to answer that question. What would you say to somebody who says that there's a conflict between science and the Christian faith? Um, I guess I would start first asking um, what we mean by those terms, and particularly what we mean by science. I think uh, if by science we mean what the average person would call science. You ask the average person what is science and they would say something to the effect that we're trying to investigate the natural world mm -hmm. and we want to know what's true about the natural world. Mm -hmm. If our goal is simply to know what is true about the natural world, then I would say absolutely there is no conflict about, between Christianity and science. On the other hand, if we define science beforehand, to mean that which we can glean from the natural world with a hypothesis that it is all materialist causes, uh, then I think that uh, we will definitely find a conflict. And I think that conflict is not just between science defined that way and Christian faith, but the conflict is between science defined in that, that way and reality. The truth is reality is not that way. The world we experience it has multiple aspects to it, and the materialist aspect is an important aspect, but it's not the only aspect. So when you ram down the throat of the observations, this, this requirement that um, it all has to be explained through particles and energy and uh, these physical uh, phenomena, you are basically trying to fit uh, you know, a round peg into a square hole. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit reality, and it certainly doesn't fit Christianity. So absolutely there is no conflict between science and faith because science, when properly defined, uh, allows for all of truth to be investigated. Um, and um, there it just brings up the whole question of uh, you know, how we do science, how we think about science. And this is a place where, in fact, this supposed conflict between Christianity or faith and, and science, in fact, allows us to, uh, to do a much needed critique of the way we do science. I think it's a kind of good thing in a way. Now, how then is it possible to be someone who is a person of faith and a scientist with integrity? Okay, so in my case, I guess at least I would just speak of my own experience. You know, I, uh, uh, in the early part of my scientific career, I was a particle, experimental particle physicist. And at that time, in those early years, I actually pretty much um, segregated my work as a scientist from my work and my, my thoughts as a Christian, which wasn't a good thing to do, but that's all I knew. Um, eventually, as I read some, some key books um, uh, that talked about some great historical things, um, like uh, the whole story about uh, the observation that the universe has a finite a beginning of finite time in the past, and, and how that, that so strongly points to a created order, I realized that the, that some sort of woke up to the fact that the created world is actually trying to tell us something about its, 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 its creator. So, um, so I made a transition from being very comfortable as a Christian in a scientific world because uh, I just didn't let I had a wall of separation between the two uh, to a point where I started waking up to these things just as a time where I was making a transition uh, from uh, particle physics to astrophysics and really the, the instrumentation of astrophysics. So, so now here I am some 10, 20 years later <clears throat> doing essentially the work that straddles engineering and, uh, and physics and astronomy and as uh, what I find I can do is I could do my work um, just with a lot of integrity in terms of really um, me meaning the best, uh, giving my best to what I'm doing, my, my most creative thinking. And um, yet at the same time being careful to make a distinction between the descriptive aspects of my work that can 
uh, that can be common with my secularist colleagues mm -hmm. compared to the prescriptive aspects that then kind of extrapolate from those and try to make philosophical statements. When we want to make philosophical statements, then the differences really come out. In practice, most day-to-day -day activities don't bring that out. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, though, we'll be at a conference and we'll be taking a walk together and all of that comes out, and it's fun. I've actually had wonderful experiences, you know, almost like hour-long conversations just, you know, talking about these different perspectives. And under those circumstances, in fact, those are the best circumstances to, to, to bring these, these perspectives right. in. Now, has there ever been a discovery in science or an advance in science that you felt was a challenge to the Christian faith? You mentioned the discovery that the universe has a beginning and how that affirmed the Christian faith. Has there been a discovery that's challenged the Christian faith? Um, I am not aware of, of one that, that, that has been any sort of a challenge to the Christian faith. Um, if I might, I could exp you know, go into one example. I mean, in 1995, that's what, 20 years ago, the first extrasolar planet was discovered. Now, there is a sort of a cliché that goes like, it's sort of, some people call it the Copernican cliché, where the, the cliché is that um, just like Copernicus basically dethroned us by showing that we are not at the center sort of, of, of the universe, that every discovery in science further decentralizes us or puts us further off center. Shapley, when he found um, through the measurements of the uh, globular clusters that the sun is not located at the center of the Milky Way, which at that time Shapley thought the Milky Way was the universe, um, famously said uh, the sun is off center and consequently man is too. And somehow there was this preoccupation uh, with man's central place in the universe as if we ever sought that central place. Uh, what we find, though, is that in, um, and so uh, going back to 95 and the discovery of the um, extrasolar planets, I think that the expectation was that, okay, here we are, we're now seeing extrasolar planets, therefore planets are around other stars, mm -hmm. we're just another star planet around one of these billions and billions of stars, we're very common, we're not at the center of everything, as if that narrative is supposed to somehow undermine faith. Now, what has happened in 20 years is that we haven't seen just one or two planets. I think we're over 2,000 right now, um, um, circling something like over 1,000 stars. There's about 500 of these stars are now m known to be multi-planetary systems. So we are seeing a very large number of planetary systems. Okay, so what is, what is the conclusion from that? Well, one of the things we're observing is that these planetary systems, many of them, um, in fact, the vast, vast majority of them look, look nothing like ours. Mm -hmm. the, uh, in many of these cases, these planets are hugging in very close to the star. Um, if you look at a plot of where the planets are relative to the host star, for example, you find that almost the vast majority of them are within the orbit of Mercury. And that's very different. At that point, they're tidally locked. They're very inhospitable. So. So uh, this example, I think well, my point with it is simply that 20 years ago with that discovery, you might have thought, oh, wow, um, maybe we're very common. Maybe that means something like mm -hmm. that's an anti-Christian discovery. It's not at all. It turns out, on the one hand, God could have, been, could have created other planets with life in it. He's, he's free to do it. But as it just turns out, the observation is that these planets um, are nothing like Earth uh, like planets around sun-like mm -hmm. stars. And so, in fact, um, we do find ourselves in a unique place, even though that's not the only Christian narrative. Mm -hmm. Whereas the sort of the narrative that wants to challenge the Christian view wants to keep, use this as some sort of a hook to say mm -hmm. that, you know, we're common, therefore, no God. Yeah. So, um, so I find in practice that, um, that uh, uh, a lot of times, um, scientific discoveries, uh, if not immediately, certainly in the course of time, come back uh, to, to really uh, strengthen our, our view that the world is created by God and the world is really pointing to its being created by a loving, caring, personal God. Um, 
So yeah, I think uh, I don't see a I don't see a conflict almost any time. 